Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you, guys, for the assist right there. Welcome back. We're in game number two of our two-game day here. It is a Snod doubleheader, and now for their second match, it's going to be a real test as they take on complexity. At least I thought it'd be a real test. Gods, according to Dota 2 Lounge, people are actually putting the Sneaky Nyx Assassins now as the favorite, about 55 to 45. And mind you, Sneaky Nyx Assassins didn't even make it into the playoffs of Summit yeah. 2. Complexity finished near top, I think second place, and I made it all the way to the end. I feel like there's some bad gamblers out there. Like these, I don't know, people need to do their research or something, but that's does not do complexity justice. Because these guys were amazing throughout the entire oh, yeah. Summit. They've done really well in Dota Pit. They've done really well in a number of tournaments. Sure, they got 3-0'd by Not Today. It wasn't their best showing. Not Today's a legit team, though. It doesn't take, oh, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say that takes anything away from complexity. No, but now we question as far as if there's going to be a bit of a gap between Not Today and the rest because yeah. they went undefeated throughout the whole run. They look so good. Really excited to see them play online. Hopefully we get to see them play on land. But for now, we got to see playing Sna versus Complexity. They're flying through this draft, so I don't want to be denying you it much further. Let me see if I can figure this out here. We'll go ahead, hop right in, and as you can see, and I figure out these overlays, yep. opening up with the first three picks here on the side of Complexity, it's going to be AA, Batrider, and Rubik yep. on the side of Sneaky Nyx Assassins. Need it's Faceless little, Void, uh, Tide Hunter, and yeah. yeah, I can swap here. Is it swapping? Yep. You okay, swap. swap and repick. Did I do it? Yep. Beautiful. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm getting better here. My MMR for this thing is going up slowly but surely. But yeah, Sneaky Nyx Assassins, they get their uh, Faceless Void once more and their Tide Hunter again. And they follow up with another big bad boy, Ogre Magi. Now the Witch Doctor being grabbed up here. So, of course, okay. you're getting that powerhouse combo factor with your Faceless Void Witch Doctor. And Mike's going to get his Tidehunter again. Maybe looking to put more use of some of those Ravages. Didn't really have a whole lot of opportunities. But this time against Complexity, I imagine he's going to have to make sure he has his R button at the ready. And Ogre, just a great uh, early game lane bouncer. Can really yeah. just thwart back any sort of offlaner and also could be pretty mobile as far as setting up ganks. Yeah, You're great ganker because like you go gank mid, you can dive the tower Ten and just tank it really. while your, your mid hero can dish out the damage. So he's fantastic for that. I, I'm still surprised really. to not keep going for this like Vaseless Void tide at the opening because it reveals like you're in so much about your strategy. You're mm -hmm. telling your opponents who your safe lane farmer is as well as who your offlaner is. So. The only mystery really left is who's going to go mid. Sure, the supports haven't been picked just yet, but you, you kind of know what the top tier supports are. Teams are going to pick the Ogre Ants available. They're going to pick the Skyrath or the Witch Doctor when they have the Faceless Void there as well. So yeah. like, there's nothing kind of unexpected coming out of the support picks. Like Witch Doctor may be a bit less common compared to the Skyrath, but Complexity have all the time in the world with their draft to counter this Void carry. Yeah, it's fine. We'll, we'll see Skyrath ignored in this game as at least it stands right now, but you know, Witch Doctor can definitely get the job done. Uh, I like to cast the uh, sustainability of the Voodoo Restoration, though, into an AA is a bit questionable for me. Maybe that's yeah. where I would have maybe etched slight Radiant favoritism towards the Skywrath Mage, but I really like what Witch Doctor can bring. They have a whole lot of lockdown now working with it, and a cast can certainly help against a Bat Rider. Who knows? You throw it out there, and maybe a Bat Rider's not going to be getting away so cleanly. And complexity side, right. getting the Rubik, I like the grab. Uh, you know, going against Ten the Tide Hunter, remaining. it's pretty easy ravage snag if you have proper positioning. Plus, can offer a lot yep. from the others. Five but here we go, remaining. Wraith King now, right. and what looks like a core Wraith King at that for complexity. Resume I haven't time. seen Moon Meander or Swindle really play Wraith King in this kind of position, but I imagine it's relatively e easy hero to pick up and play yeah, <laughs> as far as skill set. Push uh, T or whatever the stun button is. Yeah. Stun is, is stun W? I don't, I don't even know. Like, oh, because you're a, what, a legacy user? Yeah. So you like stun the, the, old, the old original? Stun's Q. It's, Q. Okay, it's, it's the, the first, first one. First, first, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a, a little wimpy QWER user. Yeah. My name's Gods. <laughs> what do you guys use? I use the old school method. No, Everyone yeah. has their own way. No judgment. I know some people who use ZXC. V, like oh, the yeah, bottom way line. down. Here. I always find that weird because like yeah, you have crazy. to move your fingers down, and I, I don't like that. Yeah, to each their own, I suppose, and what works best for them. So complexity may be offensive trialing here. Like, they see a Void pick, one way to mm. deal with it. This hero doesn't offer too much in a trialing versus trialing situation. Witch Doctor can, but you've got to go, like, early Rain cast. You can't go... Pick. Well, you could get the Voodoo there as well, but Invoker. Rubik AA Wraith can have so much killing potential. Okay, Dire and team Invoker going to be the grab here. I like hmm. this grab because they now can recognize Wraith King as a core. This is more than likely, I'd imagine, being a Quas Wex kind of Invoker. EMP could do so much work against a Wraith King at yeah. most points oh, of the game, especially the mid-game period on. He's going to have to really second-guess his kind of commitment because he needs to be in there to fight. And with the crowd control capability of Invoker, that's going to be pretty yeah. hard. I like it. 
I, I think like there's still some merits to the Exalt here. I, I'm not sure which I prefer, because you've got so much good setup with Void Chronosphere, the, yeah. the stuns of the Ogre. If, it's, if you're worried about Trialing versus Trialing, mm -hmm. having an Exalt Invoker to throw Sun Strikes at those clashes helps a lot. But mm -hmm. I think mid-game, the, the Wex Invoker is going to be a lot better. Yeah, and if he's able to just roam around, he can get some easy kills on an Ancient Apparition or a Rubik. AA is one of the heroes that, at points in the game, could just be off on his own, trying to desperately bring together XP for himself to get his level 6, and then eventually maybe get an Agnum Scepter. So that's, you know, easy pickings for an Invoker if he wants to go on the aggressive. Ten so I can see the argument remaining. from both styles of Invoker. We'll have to see what it's going to be and who's going to play Five it. Because to be honest remaining. with you guys, from the Sneaky uh. Nix Assassin side, they all could do a little bit of everything. I've seen Brax do Tidehunter. I've seen Mike do Faceless Void. We saw TC do Faceless Void last game. But it's looking like we're going to see a lot of what yep. we saw last time. And the last grab from Complexity, a Sniper. A sniper grab gods. It's solid mid hero. Can match up decently against it, especially a Quaswex Invoker, because Quaswex Invoker doesn't have the best time last hitting there. Ex Invoker, you get the forward spirits and can mm -hmm. just have the better damage, but. He's anticipating is... that there's not going to be a whole lot of gap closing. You know, it is going to be the swindle yeah. mid lane sniper, it looks like. Uh, Void can have an answer for mm -hmm. that, of course, being able to just get right in his grill with the time walk, but outside of that, I think Swindle could have a pretty good time being very elusive on the sniper. One of its sniper's weaknesses Prepare mid is that he's very battle. gankable, and I think that's where you kind of want to go for an offensive trialing, because if you're offensive trialing, you're keeping the SNAR supports busy. They've got to yes. deal with the trialing versus trialing, and yes. as a result, they can't smoke gank mid. They can't leave the lane to go deal with the sniper, so I think even more likely we're going to see that offensive trialing now. We'll see. I mean, they are starting up here at the top, but this could just be Maybe to not. defend yeah. out and invade. They do have a Bat Rider, so being able to ward out the jungle is something most teams would consider going for when against a Bat Rider or a Sand King or you know, such. But it looks like Snar are not looking to do any of that. They just kind of go right to their lanes. They're not looking to skirmish too early. Whitebeard's going to prop himself scouting out the bottom rune, but... He Mumiander. saw the ward get planted too. He yep. Mumiander got up there nice and fast, saw yes. Mike plant the ward, and knows, I think, exactly where the ward is. And Whitebeard knows he saw it, it looks like, based on that <laughs> gesture. <laughs> But the, you know what? It's funny you bring that up. Uh, you know, Aoi's been doing... Oh, they're talking... Whitebeard's doing his little dance. That's what's going on. <laughs> they're doing the dance across the river. Oh, down here on the bottom. Yeah. He's got, like, his falcon set up ready to go. And he yeah. sees Z-Freak on the other side. And yep. they just That's so funny. They're going to dance it about. But talking about the importance of being able to get to your lane quickly to scout out wards like that is just so big. Aoi had talked about it in his first new episode. It was, like, replay review series. And I couldn't help myself. He had so much, like, knowledge bombs being dropped out. And... One of the things the he did talk about begins. was making sure you get to the lane quickly. I mean, most people, you know, in pub play and such, they're just like, oh, we got to block the lane. we got to make sure the creeps are at our side. But being able to scout out a ward like that is huge because then you can quickly counter it back, and then your offlaner is yeah. not going to have any sort of intel as far as stopping the pulls, seeing where the supports are roaming. And I think it's very important to do something like yeah, that. Definitely do not sit a fountain, which is what happens in a lot of pubs, is that yeah. you just kind of sit around for 20 seconds, buy your items slowly, and then like, okay, let's move out and maybe go check the rune. But... So much of it is like timings as well. If you run straight there, you know your pull hasn't been blocked because you get there before they can get to your pull camp. So. Yeah. Once you know what you're going to play and what you want to get right at the start, you get it, you get it done, and you get moving. And bottom lane, they're moving right now on limp. They throw out the cast, they slow him briefly and get a few harassments off just to kind of force Bat to start dipping into his regen pocket, which he's got three more tangos to work with. But it's TC once again trying to be the bully like he was in last game, bring in that farm, but... It looks like for now they're going to be rolling with the standard 3-1-1 kind of a lineup, keeping a fluff on the bottom, just working with the creep pull for now. So your sniper, we'll have to see if they eventually roam around early and try to pressure him where he's at his weakest. Yeah, I think it's very possible. I, I think I would have preferred the offensive trialing, but the benefit of doing these defensive lanes is it frees up the support. So Complexity, Z-Freak's already double stacking the big camp, the medium camp to help the Batrider catch up later on. So <laughs> Complexity are playing more of a mid-game strategy here, just building towards this strong oh. quick dagger timing. They're making a go on Brax, though. The tables have turned as far as how I was expecting it to go, wow. and they do get the first blood very nicely done. Z-Freak just easily maneuvers in from the north after stacking those creeps. And damage and slow from shrapnel plus headshots, insane. I know Merlini is one of the biggest, you know, proactive shrapnel builders that he likes yeah. to promote about on Sniper, and you see farm use of it right there. And, you know, typically, he might have just leveled it because of that. From what I've seen, Swindle does max out shrapnel, but he saves it for the third level and on. So, okay. maybe seeing and the engagement there, he's going to go he's for going, the slow. Going yeah, for the max. going for it. He wants to get as much damage and siege as possible early on, and... Just needs the one value headshot. Like, okay, the damage scales, but that slow is uh, the same as at all. all. Slow and the chance percent is the same, so. He can just level up shrapnel as well as take aim if he really wants. Whitebeard scouts out, sees the DD blueberry rune hand at the bottom on his Witch Doctor, and he's just going to continue oh to camp it, it looks like, for now. Now, we'll grab it, and looks like could potentially take himself That's towards this mid lane. 
Maybe looking to make a go on that sniper as a counterback kill. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, such base with offlane. Mike, he's still zero and zero. It's it's still a bit struggling for him in this offlane period. He does get his level two, so he's got the you know one anchor smash, one kraken shell, but he's still looking for some CS. He gets a little bit there as Moon Meander is for now just on his own. But look who's creeping through. It's Z Freak. They started off with the right fire blast. Can they follow it up? Telkinesis will bring him back, but. He's a big boy. Is it going to be enough to take him down? That anchor smash Daya's should help him out significantly, and it will. Attack. He walks away, does get out at the same exact moment. Brax does get that return kill on the mid lane. They take down the sniper with the benefit of that Wiper DD rune, it looks like. Yeah, that looks like the... Yeah, the DD rune helping out there, the cold snap, and sniper in boots as well. So he, he went boots before the bottle just to be on the safe side to be able to avoid these ganks, but even with the boots, still goes down. So that's a really nice kill for the Nyx Assassin. Looks like Batrider already has went to the jungle to make yep. work of those stacks. Unfortunately, there are some mud golems here to work through, but... Oh, that's a he, lot of mud golems, yeah, too. He's, he's Two out of three camps. That's some bad RNG. Yeah, so he'll, he'll make do with what he's got, and TC's just happy to take advantage of all this farm. We'll see if he kind of does what he did before. You know, he went, what, right for the Battle Fury after Treads, I believe, and just kind of built on top of that. We'll see if he kind of analyzes this game in the same manner. I mean, for going against this kind of lineup that Complexity has, do you imagine if he has... Lots of farm to work with. There's no reason to kind of change it out, or do you think he could go more attack-oriented and get something like a Maelstrom this time? I think it's more if he goes the Mask of Madness before the Battle Fury, because mm -hmm. that, that allows you to fight and get... You have more killing potential in the early game, so yeah. if he feels like he needs to offer more in the early game, he'll go Mask of Madness first, but I, he seems to like the Battle Fury, so... I, we'll, we'll probably see him keep going for that Battle Fury, I think, just because that's his preferred item. Yeah, want to see, still working with lots of farm here. Whitebeard has been constantly doing the tango here he with Z Freak, and he gets the haste. He's on a hot hunt right now. He gets the Maldic off with a few more right clicks. He could secure a kill, but Swindle's right there. They just telekinesis him right into the tower, and unfortunately for Whitebeard, he, he thought he was going to get an easy pick off there. Now they do follow it up. It's uh, going to be taking him down, and does Whitebeard get the kill? He does. Yeah. So they do trade one for one, but Swindle does get a bit of bonus XP from that. At the same exact moment, your ogre moves on in through the jungle, scouts Casual. out the Bat Rider, takes out the Bat Rider, and then just as a nice little bonus, puts a Sentry Ward to block out one of the camps. <laughs> That's brutal. Oof. Bat Rider. For the second game straight, not having the easiest start at this one, it's going to be that much longer before he can meet up that farm quota. Rough stuff. Yeah, Ogre's level 4 after a solo kill now as well, so he's going to be get, looking at a pretty fast level 6 to get that multicast into play. He's doing really well here. As for Mike, Mike in the offline, though, he's still just level three and a half. He's kind of struggling to get that experience up. That's where I can't help but feel like maybe if Complexity did switch it around, they could have thrown Batrider in a solo safe lane. Going against Tidehunter solo would have been pretty nice, and then they yep. could have had their aggressive lane at the bottom, but Top lane. they're making a go on Moon. Moon's going to get caught out potentially here. He is not level six yet, so if he goes down, he's out for good, and it looks like that will be the case. The Maldic's going to finish him off. Whitebeard has already moved on to the next target. But that target, Bloody Nine, is going to make his escape. So a nice quick grab there on Sna at the top lane. Puts him ahead four for two, and they take down the prized Wraith King, his majesty. We'll have to take a knee now. Yeah, something Sna. Not just a fluke. That Well, the last game we didn't think was a fluke, but it's, they're, they're in some good form. Yeah. Maybe the better's no more than we do, Dakota. Yeah, well, I mean, coming off a win certainly does help, and who knows? Maybe Complexity yeah. are feeling a little bit down off their recent series against Not Today. Really trying to dig deep and being able to bring it back. Plus, their boot camp, I believe, did end or is ending. So I don't think they're even in the same, you know, complex anymore. That's something yep. that I'm sure can be looked into. But I believe that that period has ended. Now, Whitebeard throws off the early cast. He's just finding a bit of soul farm here in the top lane. He's been moving a lot this game. So he really hasn't spent a lot of time finding his own XP. But the bounty rune is going to be quickly grabbed up top. Limp flies over from the cliffside, sees Fluff and Swindle. Together, they want to try to take down the Ogre, and they do. The Assassin will finish it out at the end. Now, they do get a little Maldic there on Swindle, but he's not eating any more damage. But your Sniper picks up another kill for the mid lane, waltzes himself oh, back. Oh, gets Chrono Speed. Uh oh. Free goes down to TC, so a nice Chrono kill from TC. Puts that first Chrono of the game to strong use there, taking advantage of that Rubik, yep. who is just trying to solo farm, I'd imagine, and get his level 6. There's TC's under Ring of Health. It's going to be the Struggling. Battle Fury. Yeah. It helps him stay in lane. This is really, like, TC, he loves to farm. We've said time and time again, and the Ring of Health that builds in the Battle Fury, just, he's going to keep on being down here. He gets nuked down pretty low, but he doesn't even have to go back to Fountain to heal up if he doesn't want to. So as it stands, it's looking like uh, Nyx Assassins are getting a lot out of this bottom lane. Min could be relatively a wash. Swindle does get another kill, so that certainly helps him. For the top lane, it's been pretty back and forth. Kills coming from both sides, but Mike is still not getting as much as he would like. 7-0, level 5, but he's making a move here on Bloody Nine. He's getting a lot of help, and 
Fluff and company show up as the support back lines, and they easily take down that support. Now they're making it go on Moon. Moon does now have Reincarnate, which he did level up, so he's happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe here with Whitebeard. Throws out the stun. Can he take him down before he falls, though? Nope. But that's slow. It's just too much, and Moon Meander ultimately does get the kill. Now Fluff, the next target. Swindle Melons even makes the rotation to get it on this one. Brax as well. Steps in. Nice Tornado slows him down for the temporary, but Fluff should ultimately go down. He's trying to pull them away from any additional aggression. The stun does go off on Brax, but ultimately, it's a two-for-one trade, it looks like, with the rotations coming in from Complexity. They do fire back. Yeah, and Complexity just show up with enough numbers there. Wraith King reincarnation timing. It is the level one reincarnation, so even though Complexity win that little clash in general, they're going to have to play without that ultimate for the next four and a half minutes. Top lane, Brax. Fully committed to this Wex. There's the Tornado. Will catch here. Okay. Moves forward. Cold snap. Oh, he's going to get cold feeted, though. If he doesn't keep moving, he'll get frozen solid and killed. And he will. Brax gets shot down. Can't even take out Bloody Nine before Swindle's right there and on it. Good setup from Complexity and a good heads up play from them. And now they're going for the next target. This is going to be another kill. Swindle with the double. And here comes Fluff. He throws out the Ignite and stun combo, but that's not going to be enough. And Fluff's not done yet. Red King, though, he's got no swindle. reincarnation. He's under this T1 tower. Luckily oh, for him, wow. TC's got no mana for a Chronosphere. And TC TP'd in, but because he never went back to Fountain, sure, he's regening his HP with the Ring of Health, but he's not no got mana, mana yeah. in a long time. He needs to get this Perseverance ASAP to get some extra mana regen. Even Tread Switching would help a little bit, but not that, not enough to probably get off the Chrono in time. Yeah. Well, Swindle, big victor right there, man. He gets two Ooh. nice kills on a couple All of... Things fall. A couple, he even takes down, what was it, Brax initially, and then followed up with another yeah. support takedown. So you're... Sniper now has power treads. He's got the Aquila. He's not quite as flimsy as your early oh, top lane. sniper game. But here. Okay, they jump on through. Moon Meander trying to take it to your Faceless Void, but he pulls out the Time Walk and will be able to get away. And that might now be enough for him to finally make you, that trip back to base. At some point, you just got to go regen your mana more than yeah. anything. Like you can sit around, wait till you get your HP back, and then keep on farming. But you want to have that Chronosphere for even just solo kills, like yeah. the Rubik we saw earlier. You're not going to be finding easy farm that top lane. Once you go up there, you're trying to commit for a fight. That fight doesn't happen. You need to really either make the commitment to stay up there and try to make a fight happen, or just go right back to base, go right back to a different lane, and continue your, your farm. So... He'll go back to base, and I'd imagine just go off to his side lane, finish what he started as far as the Battle Fury, maybe even the Mask of Madness, and then we have seen TC really kind of bloom into some of these team fights. So it's going to be more or less kind of the same strategy, it feels like, from the Sneaky Nyx Assassins. Brax is trying to throw together a respectable mid game that he can use with this Invoker to just kind of keep the pressure and keep the focus kind of away from TC a little bit until he's ready at the, you know, to go. Yeah. Swindle's going for really early game centric items here on the in the sniper. He's picked up a second wraith band on top of the ring of Aquila. Gives him a lot of stats, extra mana helps, mm -hmm. extra HP helps, and the extra just damage and attack speed helps. So he wants to keep on fighting with his team right now. He's not going to be playing a farming sniper at all. The Wraith King is going to be the primary carry in a lot of ways. Moon may go back for a Midas or just the straight Blink Dagger. But either way, Swindles recognizes that he can offer a lot to this team because Void's going Battle Fury. He's not going to do any damage until he has that Battle Fury. We have also seen some of these NA teams, I mean, more or less specifically Leviathan, who play a Radiance on their Wraith King. I don't know if that's too far out of the window here for Moon Meander. It's only about 11 minutes and he has 1,700 gold. We'll have to see if indeed he just commits full force for that Midas okay. or goes down from there. It's just to be honest with you guys, we've seen so many crazy things throughout this kind of a region that you really never know. And hey, it worked for Leviathan, so yeah. why not? So they'll farm it up, but I agree. It looks like Swindle. He's looking to try to take fights more often than not. Sure, and with your Shrapnel, he can fall through with some nice objectives in getting yeah. down those towers. He's already done Radiant's some serious work on this mid-tier one, and attack. he's looking to finish it off. Dyer's yeah. bottom tower mm -hmm. Throw another Shrapnel attack. if he wants to. We'll he doesn't want to get down into Nye range, yeah. is the main thing. So if he throws a Shrapnel now, it probably won't kill it, and it'll get down into Nye range, so... He's just chipping. Yeah, right outside <laughs> the range. range. Yeah, two points Got is all you need in the take aim. And now it's just getting a little yeah. too close. 151 life Perfect with the creeps life. right there. So we'll Could see. throw the shrapnel and go for it. Yeah, but blitz for it. But Brax is here. He's yeah. waiting by the tree. One nice little tornado, and he'll take that tower right back. So Oh, they've got the blink on Batrider. So Batrider will head mid to probably look to secure this tower for the Ooh. team. And ideally find a pick off as well, but that's maybe a bit harder to do. He's got the smoke on the courier, and... He's going to smoke with Z-Freak. Yeah, just the, the classic Batrider. You get a hold of your blink, you get the smoke, you want to hide that blink away. If they kill Brax, he's uh, still he not got his Midas. He's really struggling yeah, on this, this Invoker now. Yeah, this isn't as easy breezy as he had it on his Legion Commander last time, and Limp is not going to make it any easier. He's waiting on the high oh, ground. They, they can him. easily scout it ice out blast. with everything. They just jump on through. They see it with the Ice Blast. Swindle's there with the Assassinate. Brax has no chance 
whatsoever on lone defending this tower, and he gets yeah. manhandled behind it. And now it's Complexity who finish off that tier one and will walk away. So Complexity now ahead as far as kills eight to six, and their funds continue to build up here as they push past three k net worth advantage. The turning point might have to come here for uh, Mike using this Ravage. He's level six now at the ready, and they have a fair amount of team fight to work with. Whitebeard, though, he needs his level 6. Getting that Death Ward and Chronosphere combo can Dyer's certainly help in a game like this. Yeah. It's not un un unable to defend towers or find trades when they have Ravage, when they have Ogre at level 6 with Multicast is Radiant's not good news for him. Complexity just attack. kind of outmaneuvering right now. They did get the bottom tier 1 tower in the end, going to the Void, so mm -hmm. his Battle Fury is coming nice and fast, but you've got heroes that match up decently against the Void. Ice Blast is going to connect here. Deep Freak hoping to push forward. Can't quite get it. He does get Time Walk. What if he just quickly Time Walked and then did Volcanesis? Uh, that would have been... I think he would just uh, get chrono and die. Yeah, that would have <laughs> been too far. Swindle wouldn't have been there and ultimately would have been down. You really need to have a lasso if you want to try to take out TC at this point. Mm. But for now, he'll just, after that big push in the bottom lane, he'll just take the jungle farm while he can and He's going to have his Battle Fury after a camp or two. So that's step one for TC's Void. After that, we'll look to see if he grabs a hold of the Mask of Madness. And then, I don't know, I'm hoping for big team fights. Ravage, Chrono, Death Ward, Fluff, constantly dishing yep. out the Ignite and uh, Fire Blast. That, that's going to be big and very crucial for Snob because, I don't know, uh, it's going pretty well for Complexity right now as the late game approaches and Moon continues to farm up. It might not be as easy as it was last yeah. game. Mike seems to struggle to find like ravage openings until he get until he gets his blink. Like okay, last game, that last fifty minutes of the game where mm -hmm. he wasn't ravaging was because Pain were playing just defensively, letting Raxes die. So yeah, that was okay. But even but even in the early game when he hit level six, he didn't really get any ravages no. until he hit he got hit that blink dagger timing. So, and we're seeing a similar thing here. So he's trying to just farm up towards his blink, but it does mean Snara and not getting much done. They like, buy time, get their invoke of the Midas, but. Quaswick's Invoker, the Midas isn't as essential as the Exort Invoker, so... I don't know. We'll yeah. see how Looks things like pan Moon. out. Looks like Moon. He went with the bottom Blink lane. Oh, bottom lane. There's getting getting the Lasso Gank. This is the one where you can kill uh, Assassinate. Yes. No backtrack That's what for you. they needed, and that's what worked. They take down the Precious Faceless Void, and now they're looking to make a go. Fluff very low. Will end up being shattered. Now Mike steps in with a big Ravage. Right. Death Ward combo takes down Bat. Can they even things up here with a big kill? EMP certainly will help. Swindle's so low, but he's able to get away from this one. Moon Meander, with no mana, he goes down, he's done. And oh, it's possible short. here. Anchor Smash. Oh, that, that cast certainly Eight makes mana it short. easy. That new higher reincarnation mana cost. That gets him. Close yet so far. And All right. Triple kill for Whitebeard. There's the ultimate. 1,700 gold. He you, wants to go right for the Ags. He's got you a good You said it, man. They just need that Death Ward and the Death Ward. Gets him back in this game. Yeah, that's big. That's the team fight. And uh, I wasn't counting on it coming so quick just because it seems like how TC likes to play. He wants to farm up Dyer's a bit more, but hey, they proved attack. me wrong and they get a lot done down there. And returning back a couple of nice kills, especially taking out that Wraith King, certainly makes it good yeah, for us. Uh, even attack. after losing TC. Now TC returns to the mid lane to find his farm there. But what I was going to say before everything had broken out is Moon is going to go for the Blink Dagger. So he's yep. going for more initiation kind of build. And he's also uh, sporting the... Beyond the Summit Helmet. Oh. Moon Meander, thank you so much All for right. showing your support. He has the Helm of the Sundering King, which to me looks like a birdcage that he found at the thrift store. But <laughs> you know what? Sporting it nonetheless. Man, I meant to I meant to praise these items. Not my favorite of the sets. I like the I really like the PA set. Yeah. Um, Everyone seems to like one and then they'll hate one. The other guy's like, I actually like that one and make it yeah. work. I think the gyrocopter set looks pretty cool. I wish it was yep. the truck, but you know what, you can't get everything. <laughs> one day. West one day, Virginia. Maybe. Very much real, but nine to ten, relatively even, more even than you know than it's been, especially after that team fight. And uh, Swindle, who is going right for the maelstrom here on his sniper. So, you know, other snipers maybe they would grab up a, a blank dagger at some point because positioning oh, is so crucial. Mike though, ice blast if that connects. Oh, it doesn't matter. Leia so, but here comes TC combo breaker. Not enough to save Mike, but can he at least get the return kill? Yeah, he will. Brax, nice choke point work. It's a beautiful tornado right down the alleyway. And they can't quite follow up with the EMP. Bloody Nine is going to be stripped of his mana, but they make the quick retreat out. Before he goes, here's a parting gift. Oh, he almost that was top lane. Witch Doctor dying as well. I don't know. Witch Doctor just alone to the Blink Wraith King. It looks like. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, it's weird that he was there considering the, the scuttle Structure that broke out by the ancients. He just yeah, was persistent yeah. on being in the Radiant lane, but... I don't know. He is going to go right for the Ags, though. He's got his point booster. Maybe he was trying to quickly get a second component Radiant's in that lane, but... Hey, it's, it's going to be a one-for-one, one, it looks like. The bat goes down. No, they did lose someone else, didn't they? Yeah, they lost Mike, so a two-for-one, so... Yeah. Advantage to complexity the on died that. died in the end to the Firefly, mm -hmm. even Radiant's with the Chronos Fear, so... I complexity get a T1 tower. They get Wraith King about up to his level 11, so I'd say... As far as like next stage of the game and who's looking better, complexity definitely pull away a little bit. Mm -hmm. But you still got to worry about this void. He's got 1300 gold. Once he gets his mask of madness, his killing potential like he's doing twice as much damage as he was previously in these chronospheres. And Brax, trying to put that Midas to use. He's farming here on the bottom lane. He's bought something. Is he going for the orchid? Four staff. It looks like uh, four staff build. So not as high octane of a Quaswex Invoker that I was expecting to see if he wanted to be able to play a strong mid game, but still. Been making strong use of the map we saw in that previous fight. Dyer's using that choke point to land up a pretty attack. significant tornado, but as long as Brax doesn't get caught out too much on his own, going for too much greedy farm, can really help out his team with some good crowd control. So he walks back for now. Mike with Ravage at the ready, but he's so close to blink. It's more important that he finishes that off first. He's just waiting for the creeps to respawn, it looks like, and they will in one more second. Then he can push to the last stretch of getting that blink dagger here, but Limp is flying nearby in a neighborhood. Could rain on his parade here. He's gonna fly right over, scouts him out. He's Maybe he's gonna go for the, what, flame break KS oh or something? Oh no, he's waiting for the ice blast. Oh, it's not gonna catch. Can he pull him back into it though? Oh, he can't grab him the first go around. Goes the second time, pulls him right back to Moon. Moon will follow it up with the Ray Fire Blast. And the event Z Freak, but they can't time it right. He's able to get the Ravage off. And, oh, he only steals Anchor Smash. Z Freak is gonna be brought down from Brax right here. And the Death Ward certainly helps taking down Moon Meander. Mike's gonna get away. He makes the run, now Moon Meander's stuck, eats the last bit of that Death Ward, and, well, he's gonna go for a Desperate TP, not gonna happen, Fluff's right there with the Fire Blast at the ready, Moon's gonna go down. That was a disaster as far as setup from Complexity, I saw the idea, unfortunately the stars just didn't quite align, and I think when Batrider didn't get initial lasso, he might have just pulled, he should yeah. just pull back. I, I think you're right on that, but, well, Complexity getting a attack. bit of a trade at top lane with Swindles getting some farm and some mm -hmm. pushing power, but no way near worth the loss of the Wraith King and the Rubik in that fight. It's not going to be really happy about that. They get the full stuff on the Invoker as a result. They've got the Mask of Madness now on the Void. They suddenly reach their next level of power, and that's a good sign for us now as far as getting back in this game. They're tied 12 kills apiece, and I'd say right now where things stand, it's pretty even. Complexity, I think, still just slightly ahead on farm with two cores with decent farm compared to, well, I guess Invoker and Void both farm. Ooh, jumping forward, they oh want God. Brax, Telkinesis, and the Deafening Blast he took. Now a Tornado flies out, but there's that Assassinate. Oh, TC jumps sniper. forward, he does not catch, oh, unfortunately, Swindle, but so at least he gets a kill for the Chrono, <laughs> so it's not for nothing. And Sniper got the Blink Dagger. This is essential yep. against the Void. You've This is yep. a core item. This is good. This is good. And uh, just to kind of show, because you were talking about complexity being slightly ahead as far as farm. I mean, when your Rubik has a Blink Dagger before the Tidehunter, it just yeah. kind of shows that Complexity are one step ahead right now. Mike is going to have it here finally. So a Blink Ravage will be at the ready. It's still on cooldown, however, for about another minute. But then we could see Nyx Assassins try to put all that big Wombo Combo factor together in a nice big hurrah because they have plenty of towers to take. They've only taken one Tier 1, so there's lots of gold on the map to work for if you're a sneaky Nyx Assassins guy. Yeah. So. You know, once they kind of move forward with this team fight Radiant's and they start taking follow-up objectives, which as we get later into this game, you could actually get two towers after a big team fight. We could see this gold swing dramatically back the other way if things go very nicely for Sneaky Nyx Assassins. For complexity, as long as they keep their composure, find good positioning, it's still their game. Yeah, I think it's a good time to go for a, a smoke with that Blink Ravage now available. Mm -hmm. They have to be careful. They don't want to take a... Like a a fight where they get engaged on themselves because I think if that happens they could be in some trouble if Void gets lassoed and gets picked off Void needs his BKB as fast as possible I think TC will be going for almost the exact same item build as last game BKB next mm -hmm. probably the Daedalus could see like some kind of like often you see like a Diffusal Manta type build against the Wraith King to burn all his mana but I think he's happy just to go for the straight damage from a Daedalus after his BKB and if you out there want this precious delicious Ooh. birdcage helmet that you haven't seen between every summit game <laughs> and the splash screen, you can get that yourself by buying the uh, chest and just hoping Is the chest still in the store or is it... Is I know it in the store? I know the chest kind of rotate. I, I, like Because they've got that new Dota Cinema one. Oh, okay. I don't know if they have the old treasures still there. All right. Maybe. Well, m the Steam Marketplace is where you want yeah, to Yeah, it's still that. there. <laughs> okay, there's there's a whole, oh. like, 15 treasures available. Okay, so if you want to show your full support, you can get that treasure. Yeah, yeah we're selling up pretty hard right here. But the pause is back and underway. Swindle scouts it out. 
assassinate on TC with a shrapnel, just kind of forcing him back so he can not pressure this tier one whatsoever. And that tier one still has a lot of life, but bottom. This is where we're going to see a rumble here, guys. Fluff leads out the charge with that smoke. It is going to be pop limp. Immediately pulls out, but it's going to be Moon Meander. He does get his EMP. Oh, it's very nicely connected, but Moon throws out the wand. He is going to have enough. He gets it, but no, the cooldown. The cooldown prevents him from coming back with the second life. Bloody is now going to fall. It's three hit the deck for complexity for the one Fluff Ogre. Now Swindle. Can he get away? That Blink Dagger certainly helps. Shoots right on up. Limp on the side will also blink out from trouble, but it's the Sneaky Nyx Assassins who come up big with this team fight, and now they're going to look to try to take some objectives on the back end of it. Can they do it, though? Very full life tower. It's 20 minutes. you got to be ready for that Blink Ravage, and it just mm -hmm. seemed to catch Complexity by surprise. Not to mention just Wraith King pushing and right-clicking a tower Way with no reincarnation. Tower. Yeah. That's crazy. I, I guess maybe he's thinking that Sna just don't know the exact reincarnation timing and wouldn't go. It just him, seemed like they're like, oh, well, we know TC's top, so we don't have to worry about Chrono. But yeah, they probably just totally forgot about the Ravage being there and the Death Ward. So, oh, look at it go. you know, I think they make a bit of a mistake right there, getting so aggressive going for the tier one, and they definitely Dyer's do pay. So, next Assassins continue their climb right back. We're almost at square even as far as net worth at this point. The momentum continues to build up here for Sna's complexity. Now struggling a little bit here, Dyer's and I'm getting a bit curious as far damage. as the Road Moonbeaner is going to be going down. He has a Blade Mail and a Blink Radiant's Dagger, but as far as raw damage output, attack. still got a long ways to go, and if you're putting all that on a Sniper, I don't know, Sniper's not going to be too hard to really get a hold of if you really try to target him. Yeah, and for, for Snar, I just feel their lamp ease of Dyer's execution is just a whole lot, a whole lot better for them. Like, Void, even if you don't get the best Chronosphere, as long as you hit one or two, you kill that hero with your Mask of Madness, and especially once you get your BKB. Yeah. For Complexity, They've got to have some finesse. They've got to get the blink dodges onto the chronosphere. They've got to try start the fight off with a blink lasso, blow up TC before he can pop the BKB. It's just things Radiant's which you can't rely on and things which make attack. their draft a whole lot more risky. Whereas for Snar, Ty can just sit back, use Ravage defensively. Yep. If he Dyer's finds an opening to go offensively, he can attack. start off a fight. Radiant's They've got such a just more attack. forgiving draft overall. Dyer's I agree. Yeah, and the chrono whiffs, you know, and the Ravage connects. Wiper can just yeah. use the Ravage for his death ward. It's. It's a beautiful harmony that you can work Dyer's from all sorts. There's a plan A, B, and C as far as how team fights can go. For complexity, it's if our first attempt Radiant's doesn't really work out, we tend to scramble and it, it just gets becomes a hot mess real quick. If so. they don't kill someone with like the lasso plus ice blast, like you need to yeah. burst down a core hero as well, either the invoker or the void probably. If they don't get a kill with that, they've lost Radiant the fight. Structures are so fortified. they're pressing pretty hard here in the bottom tier two, and it looks like they actually will be able to secure it. This time Moon is back by the tower again, Radiant's but this time he does have his reincarnate at the ready level two. But Keep blinking on out, and they'll just walk away with their nice little grab. But I yeah. imagine that Sneaky Nick's is feeling pretty good here. TC is bringing in some serious farm. Now he has his BKB. With that grab, now he can build in some damage. It's very fresh BKB. It's not going to stop from a lasso, but if your Bat Rider is lassoing TC, then you're leaving Mike open. Mike jumps forward with the Ravage. Your Bat Rider now not going to be so successful with his initiation. So you're struggling right now if you're a bat. But here we go, Tornado EMP. It's going to connect on Moon, and now Moon quickly realizes that I don't like EMPs. <laughs> and he just goes down so dang quick. It only takes the two of them, really, to get it done. And that's your core Wraith King falling. He needs Very more quickly. magic stick charges. Like, he only had two at the start, and then once he popped it, he had maybe six or seven, which wasn't enough. So if he wants to farm an aggressive place, he's got to be ready for the EMP. And he needs to have, like, at least six or seven stick charges at the start, and then he needs the full ten to get the mana he needs for reincarnation. Flame break. Trying to disperse them a little bit. This tier 1 tower relatively low. Down on to its last legs. Dyer's Looks like Sna are going to be able to attack. press on forward here. Whitebeard continues to dish out the heal at the ready. But look at this. Complexity are the ones looking to turn the corner. They're going from the secret shop here. Your Ice Blast going to fly out. We'll connect. Mike's pretty low here. Assassinate could finish him off, and it will. Nice grab right there from Swindle. But here we go. Jump in from Bat. Try to pull Fluff. There's the counter back, though, from your Chrono. Locks him in place, and the Chrono's stolen. Locks Brax and Whitebeard under it. But they just look right towards Z-Freak, and they're like, what are you doing? TC just tries to get a hold of him, hammering it home. But on the backside, Whitebeard does go down. It's gets Smart who crumble. They lose four. Mike, man, you gotta. I, once the ice blast hit, he can't blink anyway, so it was a bit tricky. Dyer's but he just, you gotta be full HP attack. at the side of that fight. So, oh, I, I think a lot of it was the surprise factor. They're like, okay, yeah. Snar's like, we got a five v four scenario. This T one tower, they're gonna give it this to us for free. Mm -hmm. Like they were not expecting complexity to do a defense like that, and that ice blast to set up the assassinate kill. If they couldn't get Mike there, I think they probably would not have engaged. But yep. because Tide's down, because Ravage is down, Batrider could just do what he wants. So he goes right in, gets a good grab. TC tried to follow it up, but 
Rubik the tornado got a also. The, the tornado yeah. went in the chronosphere, so TC couldn't attack for a couple of seconds. Yeah. Which that was just it, it was. Uh, they clearly were just caught off guard, and everyone they were just was like, guys, it. guys, guys, and they were just all over the place. And then your second chrono cups up, and it's just crazy. And the hot mess now on the side of sneaky Nix assassins for that engagement complexity, showing that they have a. A, a lot of fight left in him. Not TC's be even still number one farm, one, but... farmed hero at the moment. Mm -hmm. So he's still, like, end of the day, you're going into a late game where the Void is the most farmed hero. He's yeah. kind of guaranteed to get kills in his Chronosphere. He can just go for solo kills if he needs to. Mm -hmm. uh, so from that point of view, Snaz, team fights uh, are looking good. Like, not quite. The, the Sniper has to play so defensively in these fights because if he gets jumped by a Void or a Tide Ravage, he's just instantly dead. Yeah, a lot of pressure on Swindle to have good positioning. Good strong use of that blink dagger, so he's not the one that could be focused and caught out. Great positioning there, being able to work from the high ground. And yeah, I haven't seen this before, but this is a great way to take, kill Ancients taking zero damage. Yeah, no damage whatsoever, so any amount That's of stacks. Cool. He's going to take this one possibly quick enough so the next one will pop up as well. So Swindle throwing together some nice farm. Yeah. Yelna already completed about 1k gold. Where do you go from here if you're a sniper, though? Do you try to get something more defensive, or are you just going to invest into the full like right-click shot? Ooh, the BKB is always like the nice safe option, yeah. but it's that would certainly help against the. There's Ravage, still like Chrono. There's Death Ward. Yeah. He may be thinking he needs just what about like more a damage? Scotty or something just to build up more meat yeah. on the bones, more stats, so that if you do get jumped, you'll withstand it. Scotty's a nice mix on. of damage and survivability as well. Like the slow goes through the void BKB, so it's, it could be a nice little choice actually. To see what he goes for, but butterfly, I think, is like you, the evade. If you the evasion, sure, it helps against the void if you get caught, but if you're getting caught, you're dead if you don't have a BKB. So. Yeah, and we've seen TC already throw together an MKB when necessary, so just based on the farming pattern, and if TC's going mm -hmm. to be one step ahead for now on top of Swindle, the MKB wouldn't be too far off for him. But they smoke as a unit and they throw the ice blast up, which does connect on Brax, it looks like, and it's complexity trying to cut him off in the pass. They see TC here, he pulls off his BKB, but that doesn't stop the lasso. Can he time walk away from this one if needed? No, Instead he doesn't even need chrono. to. He's Everyone just going to stay out and away fight. From the yeah, they can't take him down quick enough. They don't have the luxury of like a Mystic Flare and a, and a big follow up on top of that lasso like the last team did. Bad chrono see Moon Meander caught on the corner of it. Oh, last ditch ravage before Mike goes down. Certainly does help, however. Snot looking to clean up the rest that stand. Moon Meander brought down very low on his last life. Last life. Brax forces himself forward, but he has no more mana to really work with, but they should be able to still right-click down Bloody Nine, and they will. He gets an Ice Blast off, however, before he goes down, so Brax pretty low here. Oh, that Flame Break got close. Look at Swindle with the positioning on the high ground. He takes down two. This kid's a sniper. Like, the every sense of the word, I'd have to say. Just finding great positioning right there. And it looked like Sneaky Nick's Assassins really had no idea. I think idea. you're on the something color guy. He is a sniper. He's a legit sniper. I mean, <laughs> if that was any other character shooting, I would have been like a legit what? sniper. But hey. My expert analysis is I agree. He is a sniper. That's the mod note if I ever heard one. <laughs> he is a sniper, and he's doing sniper things. <laughs> no, he's just really making good use of his positioning for two big fights now. And That's what looked like a really strong fight, start man. for Sna, given that they made an unsuccessful attempt at jumping TC. Kind of went a bit sour there. The chrono was definitely questionable in such a interesting area. I don't know if did Mike blink into the chrono or did he just get chrono I put on his head? <laughs> yeah, I, it might have been a bad weird. timing issue where they both went at the same time. It Luckily, looked like it was the same time, perhaps. Had Mike not gotten off that ravage before he died, that would have been even yeah. more dramatic. That ravage certainly helped at least taking down AA and wounding the bat rider enough so he couldn't make a full commitment, but. Swindle's getting found. Get a lot. He's, yeah. he's catching up to the void a little bit. It was 4K, 4K at one point, and now it's quickly become two, almost 1K. Yep. And he's, he's the, goal, the net worth graph is still very even between the two teams, so yeah, we'll see how things pan out here. But I as far as like high impact supports go, Sna have just reliable damage from Ogre, Witch Doctor. For someone like Rubik, you've got to be stealing the big spells in a fight. You're always going to be looking for that Ravage still. Chronosphere uh, still is nice. Death Ward's even better. Like, this Rubik needs to... He's kind of like the sniper. You're positioning, and then that blink -int at the perfect time to get a spell steal is going to be clutch for complexity if, it, if they can get something. Mm -hmm. And it looks like from Swindle's point of view, with, based on the positioning he's already had, he feels pretty confident in putting more into damage. Right. He's got the crit, yep. even as a DD now, so this could be a quick Roche yeah. takedown just with him alone. He's got Moon there to tank it up conveniently, and he gets a little bit of that leech, but it's scouted, quickly but scouted out from Brax, but yeah, it's, it's too late. Roche is going to be quickly taken down, and... I'll have to see if Swindle's going to grab this one up. He will. Extra life for your sniper. With that blink dagger too, if he gets caught out and taken down, he could still blink away to a reasonable position. But it's a lot, it's a lot on Swindle. 
Only 500 from his Daedalus, so he's just going to rip through these Radiant Heroes in this next fight, I imagine. We'll the see. His toughest test, of course, being TC and his Faceless Void. Yeah. I'm really curious when it gets to the point when, when those two Titans really go at it, as far as where TC puts his priority in these team fights and being able to get a hold of that Sniper. Or the Aegis is so nice. Like, if you Chronosphere and kill him with the Aegis, you can't always kill him that second time, because mm -hmm. as soon as he respawns, he blinks away, you yep. can't do damage, and... It just gives him that slight reassurance that even if he gets jumped and dies once, he's probably not going to die a second time if he's fast on the blink. Yeah. What if he's even fast on the Mjolnir proc? He put it on himself before the Chrono even comes out, and yeah. that could prove to be a little troublesome for TC, so we'll see. But he's uh buying his Daedalus now, so he's not going to be worried about buyback when he's got the Aegis. So. I think it's perfectly fine here. Both teams going for a bit of a trade. Snar, top, complexity at mid. Yep. Dyer's Your Ice Plus is going to come in, and we'll connect on Brax here at the... The top portion, bottom, they're Radiant's already going right towards the base here, and Swindle attack. could get some good licks in on this tier 3 tower from the low ground. And uh, you can't underestimate the amount of siege he can dish Radiant off real quick, especially at this point in the game when he's got this much damage. Radiant's that sniper could take down a tower right before your eyes. So, gets off a few shots, goes right towards mid, where they want to finish off their tier 2, which is the safer Radiant's grab. Still, Sna, the majority of them at the top lane, they smoke up after taking down that tier 2, and they're going to head straight south and maybe see Radiant's if they can cut off some of the complexity fallen. on the way out, maybe. We could maybe get this Kira now, then they're going to go right into them, and complexity of the high ground, though. Okay, Kira being pinged, eh, not going to happen there. Ooh, they're going to see Z-Freak and limp here, though. Yeah, potentially. Dyer's they only have three. This is, is a really attack. risky play because Invoker is not at this fight. Similar story with Ogre at top lane. I, I, they're looking for a pickoff more than anything. They do not want to take a 5v3 fight, that's for sure. They're trying to bait Fluff, it looks like, at the top lane to see if anyone goes. And TC, oh, he time uh, walks to the high ground. Okay, He's going to be forced down, though. Mike's there at ready with the four staff to get him back to the low ground there, but your time walk is going to be used. Now limp. Ice Blast stopping Mike's blink as well, because I think he maybe would have gone in yeah. there to help out, but... <laughs> Ice Blast hitting the smoked heroes, at least with the shatter effect, not the actual damage. Yeah. It looked like they were going for the top lane to prevent that push where Fluff was, and for the side of Snob, they wanted them to make the pressure towards Fluff crossing through their smoke gank right into a potential trap. They see, they see Snob well, creep skipping, and they're like, look, we've got two creeps, that's all we need to go attack. high ground with, and at least do a little bit of damage, force yeah. a fight. They're in the base right now, and Snot are just in the mid-river area, now second-guessing what they want to do. They do decide to TP oh, a couple back, Mike they here. flank him though. There you are! Mike goes through, gets his Ravage, Ravage off, but he immediately goes yeah. down, so he gets a lot of people, but there's no follow-up near him. Now they quickly take down Moomiander's first life with the help of the Death Ward, he'll pop back and eat more of that Death Ward, but TC just gets immediately ripped apart! It's your Swindle Sniper doing all the work right now. He does lose his first life. And uh, we'll see. Bouncing back right now. Whitebeard's the one that's going to be caught out. And he is just right-clicked home. Swindle Sniper. A triple kill from him as they make it a 3 for 2 trade. Complexity continue to siege this mid lane. Rubik steals Chrono and just sets up the kills for Swindles on the, the Sniper. The only reason Snark killed any heroes that fight was that Witch Doctor ultimate. The Chronosphere was used just on a reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And that was all they got with that Chronosphere. TC, all his farm, all that levels, and all he gets out is the, re the, the respawn on the, re on the Wraith King. He comes back, he does die a second time, but hey, damage is being done by Swindles, who's 13, 2, and 8 all of a sudden. Very nice. Swindle does manage to finish off with the last shot, the tier 3, and then swiftly blinks away from a tornado, grabs some farm on the way out, and man, oh man. I'll dig that. The tides keep turning here as it's back in complexity's favor in this one. 3.6k on your sniper, and he has claimed the top net worth at this point. TC has fallen behind into second place, and he went down so quick. I was quite surprised. The right clicks with Mask of Manus on, I guess, from the sniper just... Yeah. Must have been like a crit or two. Because, I, yeah, I didn't actually see the, whether those crits or not. I just saw these stories. HP bar just... Boom, boom, gone. boom. Out. Like, and three or four right clicks. Swindle's positioning, if he gets on the outside and goes onto a TC who pops his mom, it's... Could be a lot of amplified damage. Void having about 1,700. I don't know. He's not going to take a whole lot of those shots, so we'll see. Where TC really wants to take it from here, he's got... Uh, how much he's gold finishing his day 3k, so he's going to finish out the day. He's been holding that recipe he's for so long. got the money for it, but I think he wants to make sure he has buyback. Yeah. Yeah, he's been, he's been sitting on this for yeah. quite a while, though, on your farming... Faceless Void. It's been at least a couple of minutes where he hasn't had any item progression. Sniper's going to be a similar story where he wants to make sure he has buyback at this stage. He's got 4.5k gold. Could be the BKB. Could be the... I think Butterfly is okay now to go with the Daedalus. He gets some insane attack speed and... and I think it complements you quite nicely now as a, like a later item. They scout out Fluff with the Ice Vortex here as Fluff also puts down a pretty aggressive ward. I'm not sure if they saw him drop the ward or not. 
I do see uh, that they're flirting with the idea of making a go in, but not quite happening yet. This tier 2 had already fallen here, so it's not going to make the decision if they want to commit for a potential fight, which looks to be the case. You have the Bloodlust already coming out from Fluff on everyone. But that has BKB, so he can engage oh, with right a lasso and not worry yeah. about the Ravage, so... This oh, helps man. a lot. Yeah, does have to worry about a Chronosphere, but I think it's going to be TC who's his main target for the lasso. And to really see how the supports have come together, Bloody Nine, who's been playing a lot of Ancient Apparition, Complexity definitely favor the AA. When they have first pick, they seem to typically grab it up as of recent, and they will Double ban it out damage. if they don't feel like they're going to get it. And he likes to go with a 4-staff first, Illusion. doesn't go immediately into the Agnums. He does have yep. the point booster now, but likes to favor that little bit of extra mobility. And his Ice Blast certainly have helped this game, preventing crucial blinks, and uh, obviously assisting in some shatter setups with the assassin. Walk into this invoker here at top lane. Brax can probably solo kill him, and uh, maybe not. Full stuffs out of there. Brax, Brax is on for this odd me on uh, maelstrom build. I saw this a lot earlier and just kind of chugged it off. But the Mike of the Ancients, he gets caught out. Ice oh, blast. Mike, yep, he's down for the count. TC jumps on forward. Limp. They have their own chrono here. It's a chrono for chrono battle as they are able to quickly burst down Batrider. He had the Maldic got him, but, but always it's Sniper. Back on the back lines, looking for the opportunity. Blinks across, trying to get TC, but... Or, and uh, well, he's already gone, but TC returns and he sees Swindle. And now he's going to just try to right click him out. Pops him Yolner, but TC's like, if you want to go into a man fight, that's where I'm at best. And he just takes him toe to toe and now he puts his sights on the Moon. Moon gets EMP'd, but it's not enough to remove out his reincarnate, he'll come back for the second life, and yeah, he, he's just stuck in a rut right now. He just will get okay. easily taken down, and it's going to be Snow come out with a good couple of grabs, and it doesn't stop there. TC grabs another, taking down Z Freak. It's Brax though with the double kill, and now five go down on the side of Complexity. Uh, complexity, we're in control, but it goes back to the kind of the topic we talked about earlier: the ease of execution. There, one miss blink, and one misplay there, and suddenly. You, you lose a fight, you lose your sniper, Wraith King's trying to go in to back him up, he dies twice as well, and that just comes down to yeah. one wrong decision from the sniper, and I think it was, a, like, he, he's playing blind, like, he thinks he can blink over and get some kills here, so from his point of view, when he does that, it's maybe the right move, but it doesn't work out, Complexity had numbers. Yeah, TC just came right back and was, like, happy to work with close quarters where S Swindle Sniper's at, at his worst, so he just gets taken advantage of, and they just clean up the rest, and... Back the other way we go, as it's now going to be Snot coming out big with that one, and they did that all, mind you, with Mike getting picked off and not even using his Ravage, so it just goes to show that they have yeah. not just plan A, they have plan B and C as far as their draft is thrown together, and well, TC, it doesn't take long for him to find another kill, and that's another takedown of your Bat Rider here in the top lane. I imagine it was just your classic setup, chrono, right click. Yeah, see you later, Bat. And that's two back-to-back -back takedowns for your Bat Rider. But he already has his Bat Rider items. It's not terrible, but you're handing more to TC. They jump on mid lane for Moon. Moon had already... Oh, well. EMP, it's not going to take him down. It is going to take him down just at the nick of time. He's not coming back. That's Moon out for a minute with no buyback. And now, and now jumping forward, Swindle eats that Ravage. He's going to be forced away from Bloody Nine. And now it's TC. Big damage. Swindle immediately returns fire. And blinks up to the high ground to step away from this one. They're focusing on Bloody Nine, but Sniper has been dishing out the damage at the same time. And he he's still last man standing, Brax, though. He's going to be so careful. Yeah, he's alone. Whitebeard is already throwing out the med kit, trying to heal up everyone, including TC especially. And, you know, they get a lot out of that one after losing Bat and knowing that the threat of Lasso is not going to be there. It's Sneaky Nick's Assassins who continue to take the tempo of this game. And... Well, that was a great grab on Moon, and the EMP timing just works out beautifully yeah. for him. Brax's EMP Ooh, timing, and then he followed it up with a tornado onto the Sniper, which I think saved the Faceless Void, who was being right-clicked by the, the Sniper. And that was when Sniper got almost brought down. The full stuff from the AA saves his life there, but it puts him into the defensive posture where he doesn't kill off the Faceless Void, who was focused firing, and... Again, Snark kind of pulling a good fight out of the hat. TC's working on a Refresher Orb now, which is actually a really nice item to have here. More important than, like, you get the Ag you get the Shorter Cooldown, but he needs two Chronospheres in one fight. That's what's going to get you multiple kills and just win you the fight, hands yep. down. Swindle does go with the Scotty. Yeah. People were laughing Sounds about not. it, but let me tell you, he needs the good. extra meat on the bones. I mean, if he gets caught into a pickle like he was before... Scotty could help a little bit right there, maybe just enough for his allies to be on the scene to aid him in getting away. But Benefit from everything. Apart slow. from the mana, you get great benefit from everything about this item. Oh, yeah. Extra armor, extra attack speed, extra HP. Getting people on the way out like we saw in that previous fight. He could have got a, maybe another one, two kills just from the slow alone, being able to chase them down. But there you go. Now your sniper, 2,100 life. And on the other side, you see a Faceless Void. 
Well, actually, he doesn't have 2k yet, life on his own, right? But 2.6k as far as gold. He just made a purchase. He's going refresher or he's gods. Got he's got the full refresher, too. Oh, so got a, oh, wow, yeah. Buys it out immediately here. So okay, you, double chrono. Yeah, this is your, like, more fail Your safe. last item as far as voids are concerned in the late game, I think. Mm -hmm. the ag if you want to go the Ag Scepter, you want to get it, like, as one of your first couple of items. Because ultra late game, six second cooldown is, isn't what it's about. It's about having the zero second cooldown with the... The double chrono, and we're going to see that in these next fights. So, he's complexity. I don't think can win a fight unless they lasso kill void. They, they're going to struggle. They've got the BKB on limp to help him do so, and then sniper can sit back. But he sniper, if he gets hit by a ravage, suddenly problems arise. And they smoke up. They're going right through the secret shop area towards this bottom lane where complexity are pushed forward. This could be a disaster. They're flying on back, but the jumping comes out from Moon, but he doesn't anticipate the rest. The ravage falls through from Mike. TC just easily cleaves home two with that setup. Pulls out the second one on the Swindle. Hi, how's it going, Sniper? You want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and just takes him out before the Chrono can even expire. A return Chrono flies through. Will Mike go down after they take down Brax to at least take two down? Nope, it's going to be Moon who gets fully taken advantage of. Yep. It's Fluff and stuff with the killing spree now. Sneaky Nyx assassins get the fight they want and just take complexity from the back door. Yeah, that was... TC playing that fight perfectly. Gets the two hero chronosphere, kills both heroes inside. Just all the reincarnation on the Wraith King, which was enough, and then finds the sniper. Sniper who I don't think had even seen TC's item because he just picked it up and then they immediately smoked. So smart play from Snyder. Go for that insta smoke with the refresher. Yeah. And Complexity weren't ready for it. It is a shame they can't really do enough to follow through with some objective grabs. They, they, can't, take Roche, a, they can't even take Tier 2. They didn't make a go into Roche. They're not breaking high ground the yet. The sniper buyback is, to me, an objective, though. Mm -hmm. Like, that, putting his yes. buyback on cooldown for 7 minutes is means his next fight, he's got to play ultra safe. And if he dies, it's game over. And we'll have to see if, if Snot want to just simply wait out for one chrono. If they want to just kind of go the long haul here. Wait attack. for the Ravage also to be at the ready. And then at that point, if they get a hold of Swindle one more time, then... It could very well be game. Then they're able to push to the base and not have to worry about him making a comeback, and he's been pretty Dyer's much the heavy source of damage. Bits found Swindle's a top. He's going for the kill. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's got Whitebeard. it. Beard. Oh, big curse Wait and for it, man. Death Wait work. for it. Ah, Wait no, for no, it. No, Ernie no. gonna save you. This is no. is that GG? Boom! He's out That's for good. That's a solo kill from the Witch Doctor. That's insane. And he's out for a hundred seconds. No buyback oh. whatsoever. Dying Easiest Roche of our life. Why did just not. walked up to him? Maledict Death Ward, and the new sniper headshot doesn't stun anymore. So that he had Death Ward until he died, and it was long enough. No one. <laughs> no evasion on the sniper. The surprise Witch Doctor, I guess. No. <laughs> that was the craziest of plays. That is big balls coming out from Whitebeard. Wow. Then it's it where it counts. He's got the Agnums and everything in full. They're going to go. Curse, they've still got yeah. 70 seconds. They'll have ages. No refresher on. Well, they'll have the refresher when the sniper respawns. So they can use one Chronosphere to get the racks. And then when sniper respawns for like a second rack, say, guess what? You refresh it, you got another Chronosphere. Big plays from Whitebeard. And that could have put the nail in the coffin if Snot keep pressing forward here. They still have a full minute to work with without Swindle on the living Dota Earth. I don't know what you do. Your Wraith King ain't oh, doing... So Wraith spread. King's not doing damage. He's gone AC Blade Mail. Z Freak has nothing stolen on his Rubik yet. No, like, Chrono to try to slow everyone else down. It's TC going immediately to the high ground. He's not the one that has the Aegis, mind you. Brax just behind him has it. Let's be a little careful, because Ice Blast plus Lasso still mm -hmm. hurts. He could still die if they chain stun it with a, like, Telekinesis and as well as a Wraith Fire Blast. Mike does have his Ravage. His Blink Ravage ready if he's quick enough with it. Could manage to bait out maybe Bat into a lasso situation, but twenty it's seconds. A very slow siege for now. Yeah, I, I think they want to try and commit to this, but even going for the Raxes, the lasso ice blast is back up in ten seconds. There you go. They do take the tier three, and now they look towards the Rax here. Can they dish enough right click though to take it down quickly? Those ice vortexes slowing them down quite a bit. Limp does make the jump. Mike doesn't want to pull out his Ravage just yet. It looks like he might be saving it for Swindle's return. The chain TC, stun's pretty though, good. Getting locked in place is forced to pull out the BKB and time walk to get away from this one. Mike is going to get caught behind here. So, oh, blink, last second. Dottie's out the no Ray Fire Blast. blast. If they had the Ice Blast there, he was out of mana. Oh, they got the perfect chain stun. Mm -hmm. Lasso into Wraith Fire Blast into Telekinesis. Everything Raven's timed to perfectly disable the Void, but no Ice Blast. That would have been a kill. Like, no Sniper and they kill the Void without an a who doesn't have Aegis would have been huge. Even if he has buyback, it just stops the push. They defend the push Radiant's anyway, so it's still 
Like, what did you're you still he alive. Threw it, he threw it out ahead of time, maybe trying to catch Mike to make sure he couldn't blink in. If yeah. they went in with a lasso, he wouldn't be at the ready to follow it, up with a blink of his own. It came up in the end, but he didn't have mana. I don't know. Yeah. He was just spamming too many ice vortexes, I guess. Something along those lines. We'll have to see here. It's Bloody Nine now, who's oh, smoked up. They're going to go right Radiant's towards TC. Uh-oh. Jump forward, right fire blast, but Great Mike Ravage. immediately responds. Ravages everyone on the scene. Chrono on to two. It's TC and company that are looking to just hit a home run here. Cleaning out the complexity squad. No one stands. Not even you, Moon Meander. You may come back to fight, but we're going to get you down as well. Poor little Limp. Now going to be the lone defending Bat Rider. And it only seems like Bloody Nine has the buyback right now. I think this is going to be an easy set of racks, possibly two, and maybe even the game rods. Yeah. yeah. They could just go for it now. They see no buybacks, just Bat Rider Live, who does have Lasso back up. They're going to play it safe and go for the, well, the triple racks. As Void goes alone to the top lane, the rest of the team's going to go towards the bottom lane, and Complexity just running out of options. Whitebeard has a Blink Dagger, just scanning out the fact that no one's even there to defend. Yeah, I mean, Complexity trying to do an aggressive, all or nothing kind of a play. And Clearly, we're not intending to cross Last paths TC with at top, but Snob this isn't looking for a kill. This is looking to stall. stall. And pulls him away from those racks. And TC's like, nah, -uh, nah. -uh. Goes right back towards those racks. And meanwhile, you're going to see Fluff and company prevent Bat from really getting anywhere near that faceless void, forcing him out and away from the fountain. Bloody Nine's back up, so Z Freak, but you still got about 30 seconds for even Swindle to get back. Whitebeard finds his kill, taking down the flimsy little bat rider at this point and as they look to go for megas this has got to be game complexity the struggle continues as they are going to be opening up their star ladder debut with a loss but hey sneaky nicks assassins their double header looks like they'll be coming up with a 2-0 run here going for a nice fresh top of the chart start gonna start banning that tc void because complexity will snow with their draft just reveal that the fact they're going for this carry void right from the get-go they get tied plus void they look way to carry Void, what you gonna do about it? TC just wins games with this Void. Yeah. Even doing work inside the fountain here, but... You know, go down. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Complexity do clean house, but... This Ice Blast may get a few more cracks. Oh, yeah. Boom! Age is down because of it. Everyone's got buyback. Fluff bought a Shadow Blade on his Ogre Magi. Okay, not everyone's got buyback, just Void does, but that's... Theoretically enough. Alright, so they not take down out Brax the second time here. Is this going to be deja vu of that Not Today game where they just defend Megas for 20 minutes? Yeah, I, I, I certainly hope not if that's going to be the case because they're going to need a lot more than just a one swindle sniper to try to take it the other way. But hey, it looks like complexity. They're just going to make the best of it for now and uh, try to fight back. They press down this mid lane. I'm sure even Sneaky Nick's Assassins are kind of like, well, really? They're going to they're gonna keep playing? Okay. All right. All right. Well, okay, guys. They don't even have to buy back because you're pushing against Mega Creeps. So by the time you get to the base, it's been about a minute. Like, it takes so long to push against this. Like, Sniper's going to be on you, which does a bit, but he's, about he's not even right. 5k. And for buyback, you will have it here in about two seconds. But look who it is again. Oh Whitebeard. Oh, my gosh. Ah, ah, this, remember me, my friend? I got you last time, and I'm going happening? to scout you out. <laughs> How's it going? Ah, cast, Death Ward, Sunstrike. Oh, Swindle. Their damn white beard takes me again. Oh, look at Sniper go. He buys back. He's going. They're going five mid. They're going for the GG. Well, he's got no boots of travel. He can't even get to the mid lane. He's just defending. I think Complexity have just. I think they're just looking to entertain at this point. I don't think they even think they can win. Just no way. This, I guess. This this is a four man mid. They haven't even got all five. They're pushing into a double Chronosphere. How? How the hell do you expect that to work? Go in, beating your chest, yelling out loud like men, I guess, gods. They're just going to try their best. Oh, Tornado! Bloody Nine is going to get it. And we'll step back here, but what if, gods? What if they pull out something miraculous and we see the comeback of the Dota Century? It's a tiny, tiny, maybe 0.5% chance, but really, who knows? It's Dota after all. Swindle's is going to continue to farm up. Oh, how's it going? My name's Fluff. I got a Shadow Blade, a Blink Dagger. Here's a couple of multis, and well, oh, you're going to get supports. soloed out from your support. Moon does come in and save oh. him, but oh, here's TC. Sorry, guys. You the got. Are just don't worry, Fluff. I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it from here. Double Chrono. He finishes off Bat. Steps back after taking down Swindle. Now goes towards Moon Meander. Oh, the cast uh, bouncing between Z freaking Bloody Knight. Oh. <laughs> Third Chronosphere in a row. TC oh. doesn't get affected by it. Goes right through and uses it actually to his own advantage, walking right through, and that is more than enough for Complexity to throw in the towel, and that will do it. It's Sneaky Nyx Assassins who look damn good here for day number one of Star Ladder Season 11 America. They win both their games, taking down Pain Gaming, and now taking down Complexity, yeah. who 
give it a week ago, should have been the heavy, heavy favorites. But there we go, gods. Maybe the people who are trying to go for the value betting should have just gone with the odds. Sneaky Nyx Assassins, the team that are going to be besting them. Yeah, and even just this 2-0 start, like, all you've got to do is finish in the top four to make playoffs. And with eight teams, like, you've only got five matches left. Some of those matches against some of these, like, lesser-known upcoming teams. So, chances are for, for Snar, they're in a really good position to make it into the playoffs right now. Really good doing so, so we'll see. It's still very early. It's just yeah. day number one. Yeah. We have one. lots of action, lots of Dota that's going to be coming your way. I mean, all around the clock we've had last night even. China, C, you know, now America started up. Four European, yeah, everything's Ooh. covered. I mean, just as we finish the summit, it doesn't stop. There's no break. we got to go right and fire charge through, get out all the Star Ladder action, and then we'll come right back first circle to the Summit 2 <laughs> land here at the house. It's just a lot of Dota all the time, so I hope you guys like it. I know we're enjoying it for sure. If you enjoyed what you heard as far as casting, catch us on our Twitter. Show your support. I'm at Guy. Catch Gods over at BTS Gods. It's been a pleasure bringing you the America action. I believe it comes back tomorrow. Do we know for you certain who's playing? China. Uh, well, America tomorrow, there's one best of one. There's um, one best of one. It I says if you look, you look yeah, on the map there. Look at this tab here. Let's yep. see. It might be this game. Complexity yep. taking on like Leviathan. It. So a okay. bit of revenge there for Leviathan from the playoff run. We'll see if they get it. That's going to be coming tomorrow, but you got to follow us on our Twitter and check out our brand new website at beyondthesummit.tv to see w exactly what the full schedule will be. VODs, videos. That's just for want. the summit right now. That's just for the summit so right now. Okay. You can't actually find the stylized schedule. So never mind. Don't look I like your Star ambition. Ladder. In the future, maybe. But <laughs> Boom. But if right you want to know about the summit, you can look there. Yeah. Star Ladder. I'm sure they have their own yeah. respective website. Star Ladder. TV. Yeah, that sounds about right. I'm sure someone in chat will post Big shout link. to com uh, Cloud9, by the way, who've won our redemption yes, vote. Yes, congratulations. That just yeah. shows that if you add campaign, you can sway the yeah. votes because... I heard from a little birdie that there was a point when Cloud9 were not at the top, and they yes. just quickly flew on up because of all the ad campaigning. So, hey, just goes to show the community loves it. They'll vote for you. So, with that said, we're going to finally wrap things up. Next up, it's going to be China. Yep, a little bit later tonight. Tonight, a tonight, couple of hours. Five or six hours time. Maybe yeah. between now and then we might throw up a rebroadcast. So, appreciate it as always, folks. We'll be back later with more Dota action on Star Ladder. See you next time.